Hi, this is Linda with Crafty Music Maker. Today I would like to show you how to sew a recorder bag. Now these other new ones always come with their own bag, but sometimes they get lost. So today we're gonna show, I'm gonna show you how to sew your own recorder bag and it'll fit just as nicely as the ones that come with them. And it's so easy. And if you've never sewn before, this is the easiest project you can do. You will have this perfect and ready to go and you'll say, yes, I can sew. For those of you that know how to sew, skip this tutorial. It's way too uh, basic for those that know what they're doing. But for those of you that have never sewn before, grab your sewing machine, grab some material. I use canvas and some thread that you would like to go with it. Mine isn't exactly matching perfectly, but it's good enough. So I'll see you in a little bit. Here is the canvas that I machine washed and dried, and now I'm going to iron it. I have it on linen setting, so it's nice and hot, and it'll iron out any wrinkles and make it nice and smooth. Now it's time to cut it out. I have a cutting mat and a straight edge to make things easier. I want to have a nice straight cut on this side and get rid of all these loose strands. I'm using disappearing ink which won't disappear before I cut it, thank goodness. Now I have a rotary blade but I can't seem to make it work so that it comes out real nice and smooth. So I'm just using my Fisker scissors here and it cuts it very well. I only use it for fabric and I make sure any family members uh, do not use it for paper or plastic or anything else that would dull it. We just use it for fabric. And that's totally finished. So now I'm going to measure 15 inches. So I have my selvage, that's the clean edge on the 1 inch line. So I'm going to cut it at the 16 inch to make it an even 15. I just use the markings on the mat, it just makes it easier. And once it's straight, I just mark it all the way across. I'm going to head and mark it all the way because I'm going to end up making more recorder bags uh, for school. I was fortunate to get several recorders from another school and I decided they would make good classroom recorders for those students that had bought their own recorders but frequently left them at home. But the vinyl bags that these other recorders came in were not really clean a bowl and so I decided I wanted to make these cloth bags so I could put their name on the outside on tape and then at the end of the year be able to wash the bags and wash the recorders so they could be used for the following year. Now I'm just marking off five and a half inches for the side and once again just going to make that line, nice straight line with the disappearing ink. I had another project I used the disappearing ink and it ended up disappearing too fast and I ended up using chalk instead but this is working well for today. So I'm just going to cut that final cut there, make a nice rectangle and it will be ready to sew. Now I'm going to take it over to the ironing board and now we're going to work on the hem for the top. So I've got this little ruler here and I'm going to mark the arrow at 3 eighths of an inch and I'm just going to go across making sure it's 3 eighths all the way across and once my fingers hold it down in the right places 
I'm going to use the iron to press it. And the reason for this is so that when you take it to the iron uh, to the sewing machine, it won't move on you. It'll stay where you want it to. So again, the iron is nice and hot. For the canvas, you do want it the higher temperature. So now I'm taking it to my machine. We want to make sure the bobbin thread is the same color as the top thread. So you'll need to Google or look in your manual how to do that, but I'm going to show you how my machine works. So I'm going to take that top thread and I'm going to wind it around the bobbin case and really doesn't matter which way you do it because you can always flip the bobbin case whatever direction you need it once you get it on the bobbin winder spindle. So I get it going around there and then I put it on the bobbin winder spindle and I disengage the needle by pulling out on the hand wheel and then once I get going I push the presser foot and it winds it up really nicely. If you want it to wind full, just let it go until it stops. If not, just put what you think you need. Then cut it off and then you're going to take it and put it inside that little thing right there. And the thread actually goes the direction you think it doesn't go. And again, check your manual or Google it to be sure. And I'm going to show you a close-up here, but I just push it in its little notch, it clicks, and then you're going to thread your sewing machine. Again, you'll have to check your manual. Go through that top lever and down. And then mine has a one more little hook to go through. And then I thread the needle. The higher end sewing machines have a self threading uh, needle which is very very nice um, but mine isn't so <laughs> I'm just going to persevere and try again and eventually I'll get that piece of thread. If the thread starts fraying just cut it with your scissors, give a nice clean edge and try again. Get through, pull it through, I like to pull it to the back and now I'm going to hold on to it. So here's a close up. I'm holding on to it. I put the needle down below into the machine and then I gently pull up with the top thread and it will pull the bobbin thread through. Then I put it through the presser foot, push it to the back, and then I'm going to close the bobbin case and stick the other attachment right back on and I'm ready to go. Now you want to make sure that your stitch is a straight stitch. Then you take your material and you put it underneath the presser foot. And I like to put it about an inch through. And the reason for that is because we're going to back stitch. I use the hand wheel to put the needle in. I push the, press, the presser foot down. And I push the reverse lever down and then I have it go backwards to the edge of the fabric. Then I release the lever and now I'm going to go forward until I get to the other edge. I can use the hand wheel to go forward until I get to the edge and then again I reverse it to lock in those stitches. I pull the needle up so the lever is showing at the top of the machine. Otherwise the next time you go to pull the needle up you're thread will slip through and you'll have to re-thread your needle. You only do that once or twice before you learn that trick. I cut the threads off and I like to throw them away otherwise they get everywhere. Now I'm going to fold it inside out making sure the edges are even and if this is your first sewing project I recommend you pin the edges just take some straight pins. You only need three or four of them. Just pin it together and just making sure the edges are even all the way up. And then you want the top edge even as well. Because I started at the bottom, 
I had to do a little adjustment. So I make sure the top is even. I pin it. And then I'm going to readjust the second pin so that there won't be any bumps or bulky spots. All nice and even. You can sew through these pins if you would like. Um, I don't. I take them out. So we're going to sew from the top corner down to the next corner and then turn the material and just finish the bottom. And that's all there is to sewing it. So I'm going to put the raw edge on the right side of the presser foot. I'm going to push it in. Since there's the hem, it's a little bulkier, but you get it under there. Again, an inch in. Turn so the needle goes in. Push the front presser foot down. Go to reverse. Go back until you hit the edge. And then you go forward. Just trying to keep it straight. As you come up to a pin, just pull it out. Like I said, I have broken a needle or two, but most times not. So uh, it's up to you. I like to pull mine out first. And then I'm going all the way to the corner. But I don't go to the end. I go far enough so that it's about the right amount for the hem. And then I put the needle in. And it's holding the fabric. I pull the presser foot up. Now I turn the fabric and put the presser foot back down and then I pull the pin out and I start to reverse I don't know why I shouldn't <laughs> and just go forward to get to the edge you can use the hand wheel again and then go reverse and then I let go just for an extra couple locking stitches pull the presser foot up again make sure that lever is up pull it out clip off those threads. There's always going to be the two when you start. And you have sewn a recorder bag, except that it's inside out now. So what you need to do is turn it outside in. But first I like to trim the edges, especially the corners. In this project, I don't want to press the seam open. I just want to trim the extra hem. But please be careful not to cut through your stitches. Then you'd have to re-sew that section. And it may not be that straight. And then I just trim the corner. And then trim that edge. And then that corner and whoops want one more little spot and there we go now it's ready to turn inside out this part's the most tedious it doesn't take that long but it still isn't like one minute to do it it takes a couple minutes to do it you just pull out from the inside and then pull the outside down as you go now I'm closer to the end Still trying to pull that fabric out and pulling the outside down. And then once I get close to the end, I need to have something to push down there so I can get those corners pushed out. I chose to use scissors. I'm sure other people use other things. Just be careful that you don't push your scissors through the fabric. That would be very aggravating and it just takes a little bit of working it through to get all that push through. You can see why we cut the corners so we don't have the extra bulk inside as we push it out. So I've got the one corner finished and I'm just coming over working my way towards the other side getting that pushed out and it's just about there now, as you can see, it kind of got wrinkled by uh, turning it inside out, um, but that's easily fixable. Here is my first one I did, 
and it's all pressed and nice. So just take this back over to the sewing machine, I mean to the ironing board, sorry. <laughs> and we're just going to iron that seam flat. And again, you want that hot iron. And just press it. And after that side's pressed, just flip it over and press the other side. And there you have your very own recorder bag. So that's it. Remember, if you don't know how to thread your machine or fill the bobbin case, you can check your manual, you can go online, or take it down to your sewing machine repair shop, and they'll be able to help you out. They'll be looking for your business, so they'll be sure to, to take care of you. Now, um, if you have a child at home that has a recorder, think about finding some really cool material and making them a bag. And I can guarantee they will be the envy of the entire music class. My next video is actually how to uh, take this recorder bag up a notch or two. So be sure to look for that. Uh, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and if you like, uh, click on the link below. That takes you to my blog, craftymusicmaker.com. Until then, 